Well, good evening, everybody. Um, this is Pastor Paul Bannister again, and this is going to be um, another message for you for um, our Wednesday evening during this coronavirus quarantine. And we just got finished with our Easter services on Sunday, and what a blessing that was. And to have the special, and um, we created our own channel as well for the Lighthouse Baptist Church, as well as my um, channel. Um, as well under Pastor Paul Bannister. Um, so that's where our Sunday services will be at least. Uh, it will be on the Lighthouse Baptist Church page and most likely my Wednesdays right now because I do my Wednesdays from home um, so we don't have to go to church and have other people there to film and stuff. But um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for watching these videos and hopefully it is being a blessing and a help to you. I know it's not the same, certainly not being in church together and being able to sing and worship and pray together and just fellowship, certainly missing that. Can't wait. Oh, I can't wait till we get back. It's, it's, I didn't realize how much I relied on just church and the schedule and friends and family until it's all kind of gone away from us for a little bit. But um, I'd like to um, hopefully get back. I've heard not too good news yesterday in the news. Uh, Governor Cuomo was talking about it's not going to be in the next two or three weeks. So they said they're going to try and slowly get the social distancing back together again. I don't, I don't know when, but we're praying for it. Now, I'm really praying that God will open these doors here quickly um, and we'll do our part at the same time. And this is a good I don't know I want to say test, but it certainly is a good trying time for Christians to realize that, you know, our walk is with the Lord and we need to have a personal walk with the Lord during this time to stay strong, grow, um, and not just be stagnant or go backwards. We want to be able to grow as Christians, and I hope you're doing that by your personal time with the Lord through devotions and Bible reading and prayer at home. Um, there is a lot of ways of fellowship like we're doing here in the video, as well as um, keeping in contact with people on the phone through video chat and stuff like that, which a lot of people are doing. And praise the Lord for that, that we are in a, at least the day and age where this is happening to us, where we have the opportunity to be able to meet together via video. So, um, <clears throat> and I want to thank those that have been giving, that have been um, sending in your tithes and your offerings. You don't know how much that really means to help the church um, during this time because we still have bills. We've been able to put off a couple things um, as a church for a couple months, but um, praise the Lord. You guys are being faithful, and that's what we'll continue to do is just do our part. God will take care of the rest like we say oftentimes. Um, please pray for everyone. Keep everybody in your prayers. We all need it. Everybody's dealing with different things, um, some friends, some family going through issues as well and health issues. So we need to continue to pray for all those. If you've been getting um, some text messages that go out to continue to pray and pray that we can hopefully in the near, you know, near future safely be able to assemble together, get our church back going on regular time. That would be great. And I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to those days and we just got to pray, pray for each and every one of us. Certainly miss you all and um, praying that God will really work in your hearts so when we get back together, we can have a really good revival. This is the first time this has ever happened in our time, you know, for anything like this. And so God has a reason and I'm looking to make the best out of it. So praise the Lord for that. Well, today um, I have a, a message that I'd like to share with you. Um, it's a Wednesday evening. I'm here at my house and i um, uh, I'd like to share this message with you to hopefully you'll really take heed to it and give some thought, some prayer into what can be a difference in your life to draw closer to the Lord and be a better witness for him. So if you have your Bibles, you can open it up to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse number 9 to 13 we'll read. It says that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. 
Verse 12 says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, or by but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for just some time to be able to spend together studying your word and I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. Help us all, Lord, to be able to, Lord, just take some time and listen. Listen to your word and the teaching of your word. Listen to the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And I pray that you use me as your servant to be able to teach and preach your, your word. And, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to give me the words to be able to speak for your glory. And, Lord, we love you. And I pray at the end of this message, Lord, we are better for it. Lord, that we've made some changes in our lives and drawn closer to you. Please, Lord, work through this service. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. As we see here, this is the Apostle Paul. And he is um, preaching a letter. This is his second letter to the church in Corinth. And, and in this letter, he's saying how he's got some, some issues where, you know, he's not trying to terrify people. He's not trying to upset them. He's not trying to scare them. Um, and some people are very um, negative towards Paul. You know, they're talking about, you know, talking about his letters, comparing his stature to the way he's presenting himself in the letters and saying they don't quite line up. Like, like they're saying that, you know, his letters are weighty and powerful, but he's, his bodily presence is just weak and speech is contemptible, you know. So they're not liking, certainly not liking them, you know, liking Paul. But he said inside these words, he says, he said, listen, I, it's, I'm not trying to compare myself, myself against somebody else. And he's given advice to that church. He says, don't, you know, don't um, number yourselves amongst others. Don't compare yourselves amongst other people. He says, it's just not wise to do that. And there's, we live in a time where a lot of people do that. I don't even, I think probably everybody does in some sense. Um, and we got to be careful with that, that it's not in a wrong sense or a negative way upon us. But um, we do compare ourselves often sometimes if we're not careful to people in many areas, whether it's parents, like they are trying to do with um, the Apostle Paul, or whether it's through our intelligence or the, um, the, the way we think or our backgrounds. And there's so many things, you know, that people compare themselves with when they make judgment calls. And many times are false as a result of a lot of those judgments. And, you know, but he says in verse number 13, but we will not boast of things without our measure. He says, listen, we're not going to boast up. We're not going to talk about all this stuff, how great we are beyond our measure. You know, all of us are given a certain measure. That means, you know, God made us a certain way. He's given us certain um, talents. He's given us abilities. And, you know, that's who we are. And just come to, coming to accept who you are is a big part of enjoying life that God has given us for sure. For sure. But amongst that, God has given us this life to live in. He's given us an opportunity in this life to really uh, make a difference for him. That's why God has us alive here, you know, is to make a difference and a positive influence for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I often think about this. One of my favorite Christmas movies that we see a lot around Christmas time is um, It's a Wonderful Life. And talks. it's kind of a story about this man called George Bailey. And in part of... Um, in the beginning of this this movie, uh, George is he made a comment which I wrote down, and he's and he's talking to Mary. That's his his woman his the woman that he loves, and he ends up marrying. But he says in here, he says, "Let me quote this." It says, "Mary, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow, and the next day, and the next year, and the year after that. I'm going to leave this little town far behind, and I'm going to see the world: Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum." Then I'm going, then I'm coming back here and I'll go to college and see what they know. And then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build skyscrapers a hundred stories high. I'm going to build bridges a mile long. And he goes on to say other things, but he's talking, bragging about all these things that he's going to do. And he says, I already know what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to just do all these wonderful things. I'm going to build these bridges. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to see the world. I'm just going to travel. And this is my life. That's what I'm going to do. And that's all planned out. And that's what's going to happen. Well, um, that didn't happen. 
We all know that story. If you watch it, I'm sure probably most, if not all, people have seen that. And it really upended his life um, in just with one problem. Just one situation changed the entire direction of his life. And he got bitter and he got upset and angry about that. <clears throat> now, James chapter 4, verse number 13, very popular scripture. I'm sure many of you know this. James 14, 4 Verses 13 to 17 says this. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, and all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know, James is telling the church at this time that we can't be planning everything out in our life. Yeah, I believe we should make plans. I believe the Bible even talks about that, sitting down, considering the cost and different things. But we don't know what tomorrow brings. None of us do. No, none of us expected this to happen. I mean, this surprised the world, I really believe. And um, it's kind of a shocker. You know, I never would have expected, <laughs> I, never, I never even thought about anything like this with the coronavirus, with the world basically, you know, shutting down and, you know, people being in fear of their life and, you know, just not being able to meet together as a church never even came across my mind. It's stuff that we kind of think about, you know, in scriptures having to do with the end times as far as the tribulation period, which we won't be in, but um, where, you know, the church had to kind of go into hiding and all that. Now, we're not in hiding. There's nothing like that. But, you know, people make plans and then plans get thrown out the window. You know, just like George Bailey, he was making all these plans and then all of a sudden, that ain't gonna happen, you know. Everything had to change. He didn't go to college. He had to stay back to to run his father's company, and you know. And then one thing after another just went wrong. And this situation happened, and and he got bitter about it. He got angry about it, and he wasn't taking the joy of living life. He was really taking the joy out of living life. And so, you know. <clears throat> It says in the scripture in verse number 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So we ask ourselves, what is doing good? What is doing good? What does that entail? What, what's that have to do with, um, with me? How do I do good? Now, everybody's different. Everybody has different um, ways of life, different situations that happen in life um, that come our way. We have different opportunities. Um, different responsibilities as far as our job or our talents can direct us in a lot of different ways. It's just like people that are in the health field right now, the doctors, the nurses, the attendants, all this stuff that people are out there, they are doing good. They are doing a lot of good things. They're out there in a lot of ways sacrificing a lot of their life and their time, um, being emotionally um, challenged and dealing with other people in, in their situations and, and praise God, they're doing good. And so they're kind of set into or placed into a position of doing good. Of course, it's their choice, but along with that choice is a responsibility. Um, and then if you're not, you know, like many of us are probably at home right now or, you know, some are working at home and doing their work from home. Others, are, you know, have their children at home that now are homeschooling their children, educating their children that never were before. And that's a good thing. And um, many of us just, some people just don't really know what to do, just kind of bored and frustrated or spending time around the house and doing things. But Amongst all these crazy times, none of us anticipated this happening. We are now in a different era of our life right now to figure out what can I do? What good can I do? And so that's a question I'm going to have you think about a little bit as we're in this uh, message here this evening is what good can you do? You know, and people are taking advantage of a lot of different things right now that are different, that are outside of their normal train of thought about how they think they could have done things. And so um, 
You know, George got all upset and depressed over losing his expectation of what tomorrow was supposed to be for him. And if we're not careful, we can be that same person. We can start getting upset with, no, my plans were this, and this is what I was supposed to do. And then, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, or, or you get angry or get upset or get bitter about those plans. You know, it's just a lot of things are already getting postponed. You know, the J July 4th things in our area, Utica just canceled all the July 4th um, and uh, Memorial Day um, sit, um, plans and you know, stuff that's going on, the Boilermaker, which is a huge road race now, they're postponing till sometime in September. They're not even sure if that's gonna happen at that time. Um, there's a lot of big plans that are starting to get either canceled or postponed and um, very unsure of. And each one of us in our own lives are starting to think that way too. It's like, well, what, what about this? And what are we gonna do later? And, and we start thinking differently than what we did a couple months ago. What I mean by that is a couple months ago, you probably had a lot of plans. You probably are already thinking about vacation this year. You're already thinking about, you know, what are you going to do for work or making different changes and, and moving or whatever it may be. And now all of that is just kind of tipped upside down. It's like, whoa, what are we going to do now? So um, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Of course, we're thinking about the best. We want the best. We want things to get back to normal whatever normal may bring um, in that aspect. But um, we're thinking about, oh, I can't wait. Like my thing is, I can't wait we can get together and have church again, get our normal church times back together again and get people in, in, in church and joke around and have fun and worship together and pray together and sing together. Oh, I can't wait for that. But um, when's that going to happen? I don't know. Is it going to happen? Yeah, most likely. But when? We don't know. Um, how, how's it going to transition into that? Is it going to be just automatic? Or are they going to start putting restrictions on certain things? We don't know. But what about you at home? What are you doing? And in, the, in this time of life that we're living in right now, we are still the children of God. We still have the abilities and the, the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. And God still wants us to be a light to this world, even now. So the question is, what good are you doing today? What good is, are you doing? You know, um, on Sunday, I talked a lot about choosing life um, during our Easter service. And, and I talked about, you know, how many people have died, you know, through the coronavirus and other deaths that go on. And um, just today alone, approximately just the regular figures are around 110 to 130,000 people are going to die today all around the world. That's a lot of people you know, that are going to lose their life. And a lot of them are, you know, um, older, but there's also younger, you know, there's accidents, there's problems, you know, so that's just part of ordinary life, even without the coronavirus. And amongst that, there's a lot of um, things that happen that we don't often think about until we um, read statistics, like um, approximately $175 million will be spent on video games today, you know, you think about that, $175 million a day is spent on some kind of video games. Wow, might be a lot more considering everybody's stuck at home right now on the computers. But, um, you know, life is real, you know, and death is real. It's part of the world that we live in, and we're all going to face that someday. Um, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3, verses 11 and 12 say this. Ecclesiastes 3, 11 and 12 says, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. You know, Solomon, which was one of the, the, the wisest men that walked the earth besides Jesus Christ, was talking a lot here and saying, you know, God made everything beautiful in his time. You know, it's beautiful. God has made a beautiful world. And even though it's a fallen world, this is a beautiful world. I mean, I look out back, you know, in my yard and it's just beautiful out there. Just sitting here a little while, you know, meditating on the, the scripture and the message and watching a woodpecker in the tree outside, you know, and just it's, it's wonderful to be able to look at the creation that God made. And God made everything beautiful in its time. And I know some people, this isn't a beautiful day for them. Some people are really struggling. Uh, some people have lost friends and family and loved ones, and, and it's 
hard during that sometime. Um, some people are facing that may have um, some mental illness or things prone to depression or something. So they're struggling where they can't get out and be around people. And that can be a struggle in itself. And other people are dealing, dealing with health problems and, you know, that are even concerned. All right, if I get this, this really could put me um, into a bad situation or already facing certain health situations because of um, problems that they've had before this coronavirus. And so um, there are things that some people today are saying, it's not good for me. But you know, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I know that doesn't always seem encouraging depending on the situation you're living in, but it is hope and it is clear. There's been some rough times I've gone through in my life that I've had to really struggle with at times, and I'm sure everybody has. And you think about that thought of God loves me, he, he knows me, he's going to be with me, and, and he's going to help me get through this. And no matter what comes of it, I know we'll get through it on the right side because I'm a child of, of the king. And that's all true. It's real. It should bring hope and encouragement. And, but sometimes it's not that easy, I guess, unless you're going through good times. But I do want to say this, um, in that scripture it says, you know, I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. You know what we need to really concentrate on this time? Not all the doom and gloom, but not all the trouble and the problems and stuff that are happening. And we're not going to get away from the reality of that. And I don't expect us to, but I need us to take some time and really... Think about doing good. What can I do that is good and not just for myself, especially? I believe it's very important for us to start thinking what we can do for others. And <clears throat> I think we see a lot of examples of that. I mean, many of you watch the news now or listen to the news and they give a lot of examples of people doing good. And I think it's a great thing to do now nowadays. And, um, we have people in our church that are making masks that are, that are part of that group, you know, cutting them out and sewing them and different things and handing them out and praise the Lord for that. Um, I've given away a good number of masks, N95 masks, because I've been able to find a source from, you know, that can give them, you know, that can get them. And, and so um, people are out there delivering groceries and stuff to people that um, can't get out of the house or shouldn't get out of the house for health reasons and um, just finding things to do that are good for others is huge. And I think that's what we really need to start thinking about more in our everyday life is where can I shine forth more of the light of Jesus Christ? Now, it's easy to get caught into routines. I think that's a natural part of who we are. We kind of all like routines. And we like to, you know, before this all happened, we had our routines of work and, and family and church and ministry and things. And all that's great. And, and we get into that routine and it's hard to get ourselves out of those things. And we find ways of trying to work around those routines. Well, it's the same way now. We can get caught up into our routine of selfishness, our routine of insulated life, you know, of what can I do inside here? You know, what can I, you know, you know, get caught up in reading books or watching TV or listening to news or playing games or whatever you're doing in your home. So, so what, what can we do to shine this light? You know, and what does God want us to do during this time? Hey, and maybe he wants us to take some time and just be quiet. Just Take some time and worship him and learn about more him. Study your word of God more. Grow as a Christian in knowledge and your relationship with God. And maybe he's doing that right now for you and for us. And that's all possible. But what if he wants you to do more? What if he wants you to do something outside? Now, I'm not talking about going out into the community and stuff. I'm talking about within the restrictions that we have to do for the safety of others and, and for the law. What can we do good for others? Um... I want to read something here in Luke chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Luke 6, verses 6 through 11. It says, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said unto the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. 
Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? <laughs> and looking round about upon them all, he said unto them, Man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Now think about that situation. Here's a man that comes in, has a withered hand, his hand's all kind of messed up and can't really do much with it. And, and he comes in and, and there's a bunch of Pharisees and scribes just kind of watching the situation happen and wondering, what is Jesus going to do? See, under their thoughts of the, of the law that Jesus, he can't do anything. He can't heal this man. He's known to heal people, but this is a Sabbath day, so he can't be doing that. And so Jesus knows what they're thinking because he's God, of course, and and he brings them in. He says, man, stand forth and come on up in the midst. So he brings them right up in the center of everybody, of all these scribes and Pharisees, sets them in the center of the room, and then asks everybody a simple question. He tells them, is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Now, what he's doing is he's putting them into a um, a place of confusion in their minds because now they're like, what, 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 almost like a short circuit. <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, I don't, what, I don't, it's going against what I'm thinking. What am I, oh no. You know, it's just kind of bothering them because now they can't quite answer Jesus because it's going against what they want to attack him with. And it's going against what their thought or interpretation of the Sabbath day is. But then they know that, of course, you got to be able to do good and heal, you know, and is that's what the Sabbath is for. So it's, it's short-circuiting their, their spiritual mindset. Well, Jesus doesn't wait for an answer. He just heals the man right there on the spot. And it infuriates those that were there. It makes them angry and mad. And I, I read these stories, and Jesus does these kind of things oftentimes in, in, in the New Testament while he was walking this earth. And just, you know, I, I love that personality about Jesus. He just doesn't care what these negative problems, somebody that's just looking for a problem to condemn somebody else out. He doesn't concern himself with that. He just goes ahead and does the right thing. You know, and that's a good lesson we all should learn. Just go ahead and do the right thing. We should, in our lives, we should make it a point of saying, it doesn't matter what people are thinking of me. We got to do the right thing. Now, make sure the right thing is the right thing. And not just the right thing to you, but is the right thing to God and what he wants you to do. You know, it's just like during this time um, of the coronavirus and the quarantine, um, um, the mandate is that even churches, we can't meet together, you know, and and it took a little bit in the beginning to really think, is this right? I mean, can they do that? Should we do this as a church? And and I came to the conclusion early on that, yeah, I believe it is. I believe it's the right thing to do. I believe it's the right thing because we're doing this for others. I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I have a relationship with him. I don't necessarily have to be in church um, to still worship the Lord, although I believe church is super important, of course, or I wouldn't be a pastor. But um, at the same time, I believe God has reasons and purposes for a lot of things, and it's not because it's an attack against the church itself. Um, it's mandated for everybody. And, but there are other preachers that are out there just saying, no, by God, we're not going to let this happen. We're going to still meet. And as a result of doing that, people have died as a result of them having services, and that's sad, and it's a sad thing. And it's made a terrible testimony to um, the unsaved and people out there watching this. I even read a, a situation just um, yesterday or today, maybe it was this morning, about a church that even online was saying that, oh, you know, we're not going to have services and, you know, we're going to do this for the safety of others. Then secretly had services on, on Easter and they got caught as a result of that. And that's a shame. You know, we don't sit there and lie and deceive people, try and get our way. It's just... That's not what we as Christians should be doing. And so we got to do what's right and make sure we're doing the right thing. You know, is there a time when church should go against, you know, mandates and stuff? The Bible talks about that happening at times, but that's when we have to obey God rather than man. And where is that line? I don't think we're there yet by any means. Hopefully we never have to get to that point. But if it is, then we deal with it at that point. But, you know, I want you to think about in our lives it's my responsibility to do good, not worry about what other people are thinking, not be concerned. Now, 
I believe we have a testimony to uphold and we don't want to offend people just for the sake of offending, just because we want to do it our way and, and be all stubborn about it. Stubbornness is never good, but we need to be make sure we're led of the Lord in every area. So finding things to do that is helpful and that's good for us as Christians, even during this limited time of ability to do things, finding ways, even if it's maybe not physically going and doing something, Maybe just spending a whole extra time praying. You know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I tell you, mo one of the biggest excuses most people have for not studying their Bible, not reading their Bible, not praying, um, is literally, I don't have time. I've heard that, I can't even number how many times over the years as a pastor. Well, now you have time. So what's your excuse? So let's maybe take a family and say all day today, my Time today is praying for that family, for that person, knowing somebody that's asked for some help, you know, and, um, you know, Joy Stone, her brother Gene is in the hospital and not doing well. He's got health issues and stuff and has asked for prayer and, and maybe just taking a day and just say, I'm going to pray for Gene and pray for Joy during this time and, and many other people in whatever situation it may be, those that are struggling for work or those are having some hard times financially or re with relationships or just yourself as a whole, whole pray for your family family, for your parents, for your children. I mean, just take some time and pray and just make a day of it, make a week of it, you know, make it a point of saying, I'm going to do good while I have this opportunity. Some people are always looking for a reason to condemn somebody. I mean, it, you can't watch the news without somebody condemning somebody in politics and everything, especially in the you know, atmosphere we're living in right now with election years coming up and this person attacking this person, this news outfit against this outfit and who's right, who's wrong and all that stuff. But people are looking to everything to condemn somebody. Let's not be that person. You know, let's do our part to stand up for truth, to do our part to make a difference for a positive, to do good in our life. First Peter chapter three, verses 10 through 13 says this. For he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? See, we've seen many times through these scriptures here this evening is, Good. We hear that word constantly. Doing good. Working good. People, do, you know, people that are good. It's just being good. You know, doing good things. You know, and that's what we need to do. Followers of that which is good. Hey, Christian, I'm encouraging you today as your pastor, as your friend, to be followers of those that are good. To do good in your life. And for he that will love life and see good days, take the advice of what Peter's given here in the scriptures. You want it? I mean, it frustrates me when I when I, I see good people getting caught up in bad situations. You know, you know, domestic incidences are starting to climb because people are kind of trapped in the home. Don't get don't let tension in your home. Don't let that happen. Take this opportunity to say, "Wow, we get to be together and let's build our family dynamics. Let's let's strengthen our home. You know, and our relationships. It's a great time to do that." You know, it says, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. You know, it's, make sure you maybe get control of your tongue. Get good control of the words that you're speaking and how you speak to people and how you talk to people. This is a great time to do that. And to really just take some time to build each other up, to do good. You know, let's lift up our, stop putting everybody down and everything down and all these problems. Stop dwelling on all these situations that really aren't going to matter tomorrow. This should bring, this situation that we're going through should bring some perspective to what is important. You are important. You can make a difference. I can make a difference. We all can. Let's make sure we're making a difference for good and not for evil, not for bad. So my message here today is very simply this. Do good today. Today, let's start doing good. Let's find ways of doing good. Even with the limited resources and stuff that we have, let's do good. Because I tell you, doing good and enjoying this life is really a great thing. It really uplifts the spirit, helps us to see things differently. You know, it shouldn't be doom and gloom. Praise God. Praise God that God is so good to us, you know, wonderful to us. And 
taking care of us at this time and you know and things could be so much worse and you know things around us could get even worse over time but if we're a child of god it doesn't matter because all things are going to work together for good that love the lord i love the lord do you if you love the lord things can work out for good so let's do good let's do good today let's find ways to do good no matter what it is let's just be good today amen i love you guys i'm certainly praying for you hopefully we'll we'll be able to get together here in the near future but while we have this time let's do good Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for this time. Thank you for the teaching and the, Lord, the encouragement of your word. And help us all, Lord, just to draw closer to you, Lord, to do good in our life. Please give us, Lord, some understanding, some knowledge about what each one of us can do, as well as, Lord, what can we do as a group, even in the limited, Lord, abilities that we have today. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your example of what good really is. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day. We'll see you again shortly.